Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make your own wood-carved St. Patrick's Day Leprechaun. Now this leprechaun decoration is very easy to make. Um, this one is carved from a standard piece of 1x12 pine. I got the design or the basic sketch of a leprechaun just off the internet. You can you know, pick basically any cartoon type character you want. Um, I sketch that onto the piece of pine and then I just cut out the outline uh, with a jigsaw. I find jigsaw works the, works the best for this type of project. And it doesn't take long. In a few minutes you can cut out the entire outline of the decoration. I did have to drill a couple of holes uh, in the void uh, between the top of the ear and the hat. Uh, and then just was able to insert the jigsaw blade through that drilled hole and continue to cut out. Now you notice I do most of my cutting uh, on a board just over a garbage can and it just makes the cleanup a little bit easier. Most of the uh, sawdust and small pieces uh, end up falling right into that garbage can. And this is just cutting out that void I was talking about in between the top of the ears and the hat. All right, the next step is we're going to add a little bit of depth uh, to this carving. Um, you can do that with a, a disc or an angle grinder. Um, to start, I'm going to use a router. And I've, I'm really just using almost any bit. And I'm going to go down a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And I'm really just going to highlight uh, the line for the belt on the hat or the band on the hat so that when we eventually um, sand everything down that that band will be higher than the rest of the hat. I'm um, also while I have the um, router out I'm gonna router down both ears so that they are lower than uh, the face or a little bit set back from the face. You see what I'm talking about there. I also went around the nose and we're gonna sand, we're gonna smooth out all of these transitions in a minute. Alright, so now I moved over to a disc grinder or angle grinder. <clears throat> I'm using a flap sanding wheel, which is a basically a sandpaper wheel, but it's got multiple layers, so it, it really lasts a long time. I'm using a pretty aggressive one. They come in a variety of different grits. I think I'm using a 36 grit, uh, which moves a lot of material very quickly. Um, an 80 grit would probably be the best for this type of work. You can use the, um, the coarser grit like I'm using, but you just have to be very careful. And what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out all of the transitions. So I ground down uh, <clears throat> to that hat band and I'm now following a line along um, the ridge of the hat and basically curving the face into the hat and just using making a kind of a line of demarcation between the face and the hat and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that that face line and kind of um, create another line of demarcation between the the face of the leprechaun and the start of the beard And I'll use sandpaper later uh, to make that transition a little bit smoother or basically make that face kind of curved and smooth out all of those uh, rough grind lines. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of definition there. While I've got it out, I'm going to start to add a little bit of detail onto the beard of the leprechaun. And the, the disc grinder or the, the belt, uh, the um, angle grinder is a great tool for this. Uh, basically, you can punch, uh, you plunge, you can make uh, little cuts, you can do them on different angles and make little swirls, and you can just add a lot of texture uh, onto that beard area. Now, we're going to go back uh, to this a little bit later and add some. Uh, some smaller lines, but this is the majority of the work that's going to be done on the beard. It's just done with this disc grinder.
And there you can see the, the marks, the texture into the beard. Uh, the next step is going to be to move over to an oscillating sander. Um, I started with an 80 grit um, and I eventually went to a 220, just from an 80 to a 220. And all I'm doing is smoothing out all of the rough edges from the angle grinder. Smoothing out all the transitions, all of the curves around the uh, outside outline of the leprechaun, and also smoothing out all of the um, all of the transitions. So you know, making that the curve of the face a little bit smoother. <clears throat> I even smoothed out some of the um, the heavy grind lines on the beard itself. We're almost almost done. The rest is, is pretty easy. I'm going to use a Dremel grinder just to add a little bit of detail uh, onto the ears. I'm just going to basically carve out the middle of the ears. I'm going to leave this kind of rough. I just want to I want to see those lines and that, those grooves. If you didn't have a Dremel, you could do this with a, a little wood chisel. The Dremel does make it make it kind of easy. All right, and then we're going to add some detail to the face. Now, with all the sanding and the grinding uh, that we've done, I kind of erased all of those original um, marks. So I'm going to redraw, uh, you know, the eyes, uh, the eyebrows, and the mouth onto the leprechaun. I went back to my original uh, drawing or original uh, artwork uh, that I printed off the internet, and I'm just doing this by eye. And then we're going to carve those details onto the face or into the face uh, with a Dremel grinder with a cutoff wheel. You can see, I just kind of pivot one one hand in order to make those circular motions and this cuts a nice groove uh, it's, it's great for adding additional detail onto, onto a lot of woodworking projects on this one I'm going to use it for the mouth for the eyebrows While I've got it out, um, I'm also going to make the uh, line distinguishing the hat from the hat band a little bit more distinct, and just so it stands out a little bit. And then while I've got this cutting wheel out, I'm going to add some additional detail uh, onto that beard. And I'm just making, making lines, straight lines. You can add a little curve to them on one side of the beard and a curve in the other direction on the other side of the beard. This goes very quickly and it just does add a nice amount of uh, texture onto, that, onto those grooves that we created earlier with the angle grinder. So the only thing left as far as um, actual carving on this project is to just drill two holes for the eyes. Uh, you don't want to go all the way through the wood, well, you know, about halfway through is fine. And then sometimes you do have to sand uh, the face one more time uh, just to get off the burr from the drill hole for each one of the eyes. Now I wanted to stain this, I didn't want to paint it, uh, so I ended up doing a couple cool things here. I just stained the face in a natural stain. And I did that first. Um, I did that for a reason. I wanted to stain the beard in a red color. I um, wasn't sure 
if they sold red stain. Uh, so I, I kind of mixed up a little of my own. I used that same natural colored stain as the base and in a much smaller container, I added a few drops of red modeler's paint uh, into that stain and mixed it up. And I was very surprised. It, it really did a nice job. Um, you know, you can, you can play around with how, uh, how dark you want the red. You could make it as light as you want or as dark as you want uh, based on the amount of red paint you add into the stain. Um, but you'll see once I wipe this off, I wanted to see some of the wood grains and I ended up with exactly, exactly what I wanted. Um, because I stained the face natural first, any little drops or any little spray that went onto the face, I was able to wipe those off uh, pretty easily. And if you have one that's a little harder to come off, you can just dip the paper towel into some of that natural colored stain again, and then it'll wipe off uh, even easier. Uh, for the hat band, I mixed up some, some black stain in the exact same manner. And for the hat, um, I did the exact same thing. I mixed a little bit of uh, green modeler's paint uh, in with that natural colored stain, and I ended up with a, with a very light uh, green let it soak on, you know, for five or ten minutes, and then I wiped it. I wiped it off. And this is the the finished leprechaun. Uh, the only thing, in addition to the stain that I did after the stain completely dried, I did give it a coat of uh, spray lacquer. It makes a, a great decoration. I ended up hanging on my door. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel.